All right, let's go to class. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to try something new in the way that we're gonna learn about art history. So real quick, let's go over our homework before we dive into VR, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share all those various platforms. Make sure that we're getting the message out there to all of our students and teacher friends. All right, so for today's class, we're gonna be diving into a different way to teach art history. And for me, that's with some VR. So I've got a Oculus headset, got this, um, picked this up recently, mainly for some other purposes. Uh, I, I like to do gaming and exercise through it. Uh, but then I thought we could teach through this as well. So get it going into VR, we're gonna go explore the world of Dolly. For today's lesson, we're gonna be diving into the artwork of Mr. Salvador Dali. We're looking at the archeological reminiscence of Millet's Anglis from 1933 by Dali. Now looking at this piece as we're flying in, the archeological reminiscence of Millet's Anglis, the low horizon line, the almost empty landscape emphasizing the monumentality of the strange structure in the foreground. And Dali transforms the Millet figures into monuments, not because of they are seen as dead symbols, but because they represent the ever ancient principles, the foundations of human sexuality. Now in Blocken's ever uh, evocative painting, The Isle of Dead, informs the moonlit gloom of the powerful work and cypress trees, symbols of death and fidelity, strike the atmosphere of, fatality, of fatalism. These supposedly universal principles in a process of male iteration are also being shown in the bottom center of to be a small boy. A boy, perhaps, Dolly himself, who is also seen to the right, with the treading two similar scenes underscore the contrast between the innocence of childhood and the fears of adulthood. go towards this doorway you can see a phone with the handle as a lobster very surrealism in its styling so that as we can see uh, the phone is ringing and you want to enter you want to play around with that aspect and above us we have the spiraling columns that go around the outside up the interior of the structure to get to the top but again we have to start wondering what lies ahead of us at the top of that Elephants along with the melting clocks are the two best known objects from Dolly's surrealist periods. Dolly made use of the elephants on several occasions with their illusion in this painting best known for their elongated limbs. Closer attention also reveals that the animals are carrying heavy obelisk on their backs and these are believed to have been inspired by the artwork of Gian Lorenzo Bernini. This Italian had produced a sculptural basis in Rome where an elephant carried an ancient obelisk. Now the elephant reoccurs several times again in Dolly's work, first appearing in 1944's painting, Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around a Pomegranate a Second Before Awakening. It appears again in The Temptation of St. Anthony and Swans Reflecting Elephants. Vibrant background continues to illustrate the Catalonian countryside as also seen in the persistence of memory and the, ro and the rose meditative. The surrealist elements in this painting refer to the balance between the spindly legs of the elephants and the huge weight that they appear to be carrying along with the additions of the obelisk. It is only this painting that actually makes the elephants the only key focus in the work. Additionally, the elephants were specifically selected animals which Dolly used to contrast the difference between weight and structure. With the elephants carrying huge weights on their backs in top of these brittle legs, vastly elongated in order to substantially distort reality and strengthen the symbolism in his paintings. The, obje the objects on the back of the elephants are believed to be inspired by Bernini's sculptures that are based in Rome of an elephant carrying an ancient obelisk and has been mentioned in several conversations with the artist, so it's been a fairly reliable claim. Now, Dolly was known for surrealism, and following his death of his mother of breast cancer in 1921, he attended the Academy of San Fernando in Madrid, where he was heavily influenced by several different artistic movements, such as metaphysics and cubism. It wasn't long before his talent as an artist, as a flamboyant eccentric ways, gained a great deal of attention. After being expelled from the school for dis being disruptive and egotistical, Dolly took several trips to Paris where he met renowned intellectuals and painters such as Picasso and Miro, and later of whom introduced him to the Surrealist movement. From 1921 onwards, Dolly produced many surrealist paintings that are often described as, as, as collages of his dreams and subconscious thoughts. He also collaborated with surrealist film director 
Bruno in making two short films. Dolly officially joined the Surrealist group and by, the 19, by 1930, he was considered the most notorious figure in the Surrealist movement. His most famous painting, arguably the most famous of all Surrealist paintings, is The Persistence of Memory. And that was completed in 1931. This world-renowned painting, often called the Soft Watches or the Melting Clocks, was a clear example of Dali's unique talent as an artist. The artist would collaborate regularly with other members of the Surrealist movement, but their opinions would regularly clash, both on artistic matters, but also on political views. This led to other members starting to distrust Dali and he slowly became more and more sidelined. He was not someone who could tailor his opinions or, or discipline himself to avoid these confrontations and perhaps secretly he even enjoyed causing controversy. Just as he would write across the rest of his life from when he was a child and excluded from school to his later years as an artist. Now, all the resources that I'm using for this for this piece, I'm gonna be putting down to the description below. So if you guys wanna further deep dive into the art history behind this stuff, check it out there. Awesome class, I hope that you guys had just as much fun experiencing the paintings along with me as I did. Again, we're gonna be trying to do this more often, so I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below, but let's go ahead and close out class as we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all the various platforms. Gotta get the message out there to as many students and teachers as we possibly can. Wanna educate those masses. And don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern today, raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys. There's a lobster ringing. I'm gonna get full Christopher Walken.